although online gambling is illegal in South Africa, the trade has been growing and threatens the future of legal land-based casinos. Regulating and combating online gambling remains a challenge in South Africa because of the number of illegal sites operating in the country without clear enforcement and control. The challenges on online gambling were pointed out by a number of stakeholders during the seminar on online gambling hosted by the Department of Trade and Industry and the National Gambling Board in Pretoria on Wednesday. Now for more on that story, Evelyn Masoja, the Chief Director of Market Research and Trend Analysis at the DTI, joins us in studio. Thanks for joining me, Evelyn. Thank you and good evening. Now tell us more about the recent seminar on online gambling. What was the aim of the specific seminar? As government, we are very concerned about online gambling. We came up with this seminar to bring together stakeholders and everyone who's involved in gambling to ensure that we discuss the issues that are affecting our country around illegal online gambling. We wanted to come up with strategies to, to get everyone uh, to, to, to come on board, to support us, to say that what can be done, because this thing is happening in the country and our people are affected, they are not protected. So we want to move beyond the debate of whether to legalize or not legalize, but to look for solutions, practical strategies. So this uh, event was about that, to say, what do we do, given that we know that this is happening in our land. Now, speaking of practical solutions, the policy position on prohibiting online gambling in South Africa remains a huge challenge and you've just mentioned that that was a major discussion within the seminar. Why is it such a major challenge? It is a major challenge because we want to prohibit it because many people are vulnerable and we need to protect them. Right now, online gambling is something that is open. The internet is wide. Uh, young children, the youth uh, are, are affected because they are exposed to the internet. Everybody has a smartphone. Most people have uh, iPads, tablets, and the internet is wide. So right now, anyone can, in, uh, uh, can participate on gambling in the office 24 hours a day, 365 uh, days a year. So people need control, I mean, protection. We need to protect people from this uh, challenge. Another thing I must point out is that in the economy, gambling does online gambling, unlike the other modes of gambling, does not contribute much. Even if you have it, you'll find that the, issue, the issues of infrastructure are limited. So you won't find the investment that is required even for employment creation. So you'll have a bigger problem of controlling problem gambling because everybody can ha participate in it but then the economy will be benefiting very very minimally so it's a concern. Evelyn something that you mentioned now and I want to pick up on that now you've just said that the reason why online gambling is bad is because um, it can't be regulated but also it doesn't contribute much to the economy so are you saying that if it did contribute to the economy you would all find ways to legalize it? Not necessarily. My argument and our argument as DTI is that it doesn't mean that if something can exist, we must allow it to exist. Right now, there is crime in the country. Mm -hmm. Do we say because crime exists, we must legalize it? So even if there was a contribution to the economy, the social ills, the social cost of it are too wide. Think about it. Everyone has access to the, to the internet nowadays. Internet cafes are everywhere. And one of the challenges we are having now is that we find most internet cafes offering online games just think about the young children who are exposed every day every time you go into the internet you find all these illegal sites everywhere so we are saying that this thing needs to be prohibited we need to take a responsible stance as government right now many South Africans are over indebted they are struggling with debt so imagine now if people are exposed to this and they spend their hard-earned cash on gambling it's a challenge now, some have argued that regulating the trade is more effective um, than prohibiting it. What's your take on that? Do you think that it's completely false or there can be ways to regulate it, but it will take time to build up and, and write up those policies? Our view is that we ask, our stance is that we prohibit, mm -hmm. given that the, the cost of prohibiting, um, the, 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 the allowing it is very costly for us, for our society. But those who have a view about it, obviously views are open. Everyone can have a view and anyone can motivate for that view. But what we are saying is that we need to control it, even if we legalize it. The issues of uh, ensuring that people are protected remains. So we would rather not open it up 
if those who participate, participate, would rather not open it up because the cost to the economy, to the country is bigger than if you restrict it. Now in general, um, gambling is a problem in our country and sometimes people abuse it. What are some of the interventions that you as a DTI have in place um, to ensure that people are helped but also educated um, about um, uh, abusing gambling, gambling yes, and online yes, gambling in yes. general? We have an, an, an agency, the National uh, Gambling, um, uh, uh, the National Gambling Board, that is looking after our our gambling uh, legislation. Um, it it enforce it looks after the issues around this, and we with the new policy proposals, we are strengthening their regulatory mandate in terms of combating these illegal activities. We have the National Responsible Gambling Program that is looking at problem gambling and people who are addicted to gambling. And one of the things that we want to strengthen is to bring together our regulators and other law enforcement agencies. We are currently working together from time to time, but it's something that we need to strengthen further to ensure that this is controlled in the country. Um, awareness raising campaigns are things that, like the seminar that we had, it was one of the ways to raise awareness that we have a challenge in this country. So we will use different strategies, like even research, to look at what is the current trends with illegal gambling activities, particularly online gambling. So, I mean, I, I understand that you, the, the specifics of the seminar was to look at illegal gambling. Um, what about legal gambling? What are some of the interventions there? The interventions that are existing are mm -hmm. along the same lines. We have different provincial uh, regulators that are looking at different aspects of enforcing and licensing gambling activities. We have the National Responsible Gambling Program that combats, that look at issues of helping people with illegal, I mean, I mean with uh, problem gambling. Yes. So we do have uh, systems in place that looks at the issues around illegal gambling and the different provinces have got their own uh, uh, arms that are taking care of some of the issues that are coming up in the gambling uh, activities, the legal ones. So they license the activities and then they look after the different areas like the illegal gambling activities. So we do have systems in place. The online gambling the issue is very key because it's a new, uh, it's a new issue. It's, it's been happening in the country, surely, but it requires a different kind of mechanism. So. We need to put our heads together to ensure that we do something to ensure it doesn't become a bigger problem that we cannot actually be able to control. Now, July is the National Savings Month. What are the economic and social effects of gambling in the country? The, the social effect is that uh, gambling, if it's not handled properly, um, the problem gambling affects uh, uh, you find that it has an effect in the society. Families get affected. People gamble their, their incomes away. Uh, we've heard of cases of people who have actually lost their jobs and ended up in jail because they end up even doing criminal activities to, to, to have access to gambling. So obviously this erodes on the savings. It erodes on the economy. And you know South Africans, most of our people have got issues of debt. So if we allow certain things, we are actually contradicting ourselves because mm. as government, we are concerned. If more people are affected by issues of credit and even issues around liquor abuse and so, so, and so on and so on, and if you allow things like additional modes of gambling in society, then we are saying anything can happen to them. So we need to be more responsible and try to protect those who can protect themselves. Evelyn, speaking of responsibility, in what ways can we as citizens help government as well as the other stakeholders um, in terms of reporting, illegal gambling and, and, and trying to curb this because it is affecting our economy yes, after all? Yes, 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 yes. I think if you are aware, for example, the internet cafes, that's an area that we are concerned about too. If you are aware of some internet cafes that are uh, masquerading as... Um, but they're offering online gambling, you need to report that to the National Gambling Board, even to the South African Police Services. You need to record, I mean, report that to other law enforcement agencies, but even to the provincial gambling boards. Um, we encourage people to report these activities. If you, if you are also participating in illegal online gambling, you need to know that it's illegal in South Africa. And you risk that if you win while you are participating, you will not even get your winnings back. There's a risk that if you, you, you do participate, you win something, your money can be confiscated. And you might be participating in illegal uh, money laundering issues like other 
criminal activities without even knowing. So there are many risks online. And sometimes even if you participate there, there's a risk that your, your information can be compromised and you may end up in other sorts of trouble. So our people must report this, uh, this cha these challenges. They must indicate whenever they know about some people offering illegal activities around online gambling. Mm -hmm. And they must refrain from participating in online gambling. That's what we're encouraging. Avoid gambling online. It's not legal in South Africa. You are not protected. And should anything happen to you, you're on your own. And if you see it happening, do report it. Indicate to the National Gambling Board, report to the provincial gambling boards and other law enforcement agencies. Evelyn, just before we wrap up, I just want to look at the reality of the kind of power that, that government has and even the different stakeholders have to actually prohibit illegal gambling because the internet, as you mentioned, is a whole other world on its own. So what, are, what is the realistic way to be able to stop it other than telling people it's illegal? How can you practically do it? There are many things that we are currently trying to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, this policy proposal is one of the responses that we are having to say that we want to strengthen and tighten our approach. We are aware that obviously there are gaps. Yeah. We are aware that there are things that need to be done. But it's not just the government responsibility. The private sector needs to help us. The gambling industry needs to take some responsibility. We all need to put our heads together to ensure that we protect our society. So I will say that as government, we are working on this and we are currently doing our best to ensure that we tighten controls and strengthen coordination with other entities that are responsible for, for gambling overall. Evelyn, thank you so much for joining us. Um, it's been really informative and I mean, I didn't even know a lot about um, online gambling. You're welcome thank and you thanks for much. having us here. Thanks a lot. Thank you.